I built this piano. Well, really, I just adapted it. This used to be a toy piano, but I messed around with it. You can turn this dial to change the pitch of the notes. It has all these buttons, and I don't remember what the switch does. Okay, I still don't know what it does, but I made this piano through a strange process called circuit bending. Circuit bending is a process to turn pre-made electronics into new experimental musical instruments. This is through taking existing circuits and finding the hidden potential within them. This process allows for a variety of different creations and experimentation is the only rule. Present to you, the Furby Organ! <laughs> Circuit bending was invented as an accident by this man, Reed Gazala. Gazala was a teenager when he discovered the art. One day, he was doing homework when he suddenly slammed his desk drawer. Inside that drawer was a transistor radio with exposed wiring. By pure cosmic coincidence, the radio's circuitry collided with the back of the metal desk. This caused the radio to short circuit and scream out sounds that Gazala had never even knew were possible. For the next few years, Gazala took the radio's circuitry and turned it into a noise-making machine. Gazala dedicated his life to creating weird, wonderful musical machines, and continues to do so to this day. He even literally wrote the book on the subject. Circuit Bending. Build Your Own Alien Instruments. Now, I'm sure that seeing all this, you might be asking, how does this all work? What's that? What's this? What's anything? Well, don't worry. I'm going to give a brief explanation of some of the little components you'll find in any electronic circuit. First, you'll always need a power source namely batteries. These supply the electricity to power the rest of the circuit. Think of a circuit as a line from one end of the battery to the other. The electricity flows through the components and then heads back. Think of a circuit like a system of pipes. Water flows through the pipes in order to do some amount of work. This is a resistor. It is one of the most common electronic components. These add resistance to electricity's path, hence the name. Continuing with the pipe metaphor, a resistor could be compared to a smaller pipe. Less water would flow through it. Another important component is the capacitor. These little guys store energy and then release it. In the pipe metaphor, they could be seen as a balloon that fills up with water and then releases it. This slows down the circuit. The most important component for circuit bending is, of course, the speaker. Speakers convert electric energy into sound energy. But don't just plug a battery into a speaker and expect to hear anything. In order for the speaker to produce any sound, there needs to be some amount of oscillation. When we speak, the sound is produced by vibrations through the air. These vibrations can be characterized by a wave or a waveform. Notice the up and down movement of the wave. In order to get sound out of the speaker, we need this up and down motion in the electric signal. This is oscillation. There are ways to construct oscillators out of pre-made chips, but for circuit bending, you don't really need to worry about that. Most of the stuff that you look at already has an oscillator in it. In any noise-making circuit, there will be a speaker, a capacitor, and a resistor. Capacitors and resistors work together to set the speed of the circuit sound. If you change the value of the resistor or the capacitor, you'll get a different pitch. There are usually a lot of different resistors in one chip, so you gotta look for one that actually controls the speed. This resistor is called the pitch resistor. In order to find this mythical component, here is what you will need. Licking your finger increases the conductance. With your newly conductive finger, poke around the circuit while it makes noise. If the pitch starts to change, then you've found the pitch resistor. After finding the pitch resistor, you can swap it out with a potentiometer. A potentiometer is a resistor 
that lets you change its value. It's the exact same thing that I used for the dial on my piano at the beginning of this video. In order to switch out the components, you're going to need a soldering iron. This is basically a hot stick. You are also going to need a lot of solder. This is just melty wire. This stuff lets you solder in new components. Now, I've learned everything that I know about circuit bending from this man. He is a professor at the University of Utah, and I'll let him introduce himself. I'm Eric Brunvand. I'm an associate professor of computer science in the School of Computing at the University of Utah. A beginning circuit bender needs the um, needs the gumption to get a screwdriver and take a toy apart and see what's on the inside. So the primary thing you need for a circuit bender is you need a, a cheap plastic toy, preferably from the 80s or 90s, that you buy for a dollar or two dollars at the thrift store. And then you gotta take it apart, see what's inside, and mess with it till it does something different than it was intended to do. Now, here's a word of warning. Never, and I repeat, never work on a toy that plugs into the wall. A battery is 1.5 volts. A wall socket is 120 volts. You can touch a battery with a licked finger. I don't think you should do that with an outlet. I think it's important to learn how electronics work. We are surrounded by technology everywhere we look, and we're not even expected to have a passing knowledge of it. Circuit bending is the perfect way to get some sense of everything that's around us.